DC Comics. Boy, for a black site, they're very specific about its location. You don't own me. Gee, I wonder if any male character will be able to own this female prisoner character. Harley steals the Juliet Lewis from Natural Born Killers. Guard watching monitor is preoccupied with Chinese food or pizza cliche. Please allow me to introduce myself. Playing sympathy for the devil during the introduction of the main asshole of the movie shows that this movie's asshole is really the biggest asshole of the movie. Bad news, Mr. Ayer. We've blown the entire soundtrack budget inside four minutes of the movie. Eh, take the rest of what you need out of my salary. Um, for more songs? You heard me, goddammit! The world changed when Superman flew across the sky. Not the main character starts narrating four minutes into the picture. Who the f*** opens a restaurant named after a recurring bug infestation? This is like naming your restaurant Brood X or even Malaria Carriers. We got lucky with Superman who shared our values. This sounds like something a person would say who hadn't seen Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. At least if our values include not murdering thousands of innocent civilians. You're not gonna pitch us that Task Force X project of yours again, are you? You guys didn't discuss this before you set up this meeting at the swanky restaurant? Floyd Lawton, AKA Deadshot. So we saw Deadpool and decided it wanted some of that sweet, sweet graphic credits love. Only in the process, it forgot to be funny. So we're left with stylized character introductions without soul. This movie introduced us to both Deadshot and Harley Quinn in the first minute, but now we're getting second introductions of them before we've even gotten to the new characters yet. Seems like this movie could have started with Viola Davis and cut out all the creepy guard bullshit. Is Deadshot great with guns because he naturally has amazing hand-eye coordination? Or is it because he has this incredible scope that lines everything up for him? I just gave an anonymous tip to the right guy in Gotham City. An anonymous tip about f***ing what? If you followed his daughter to get him, why didn't you arrest him on your own? This just seems like a spot where you wanted to introduce Batman into the movie. Where'd you put him? Let's just say I put him in a hole and threw away the hole. Well, no, he's in a regular-ass maximum security cell. That line makes it sound like you parallaxed him. First off, the murder of Robin is played like some trifling thing that we get a blip of text about. Second off, this is the second movie in the DCU this year to hint at a Robin dies story that would have been way better than the two movies we actually got. She thought she was curing him, but she was falling in love. But why? Because he's so handsome? Or because she never should have been certified to treat asylum patients in the first place due to her own insanity? I need a machine gun. Even though she fell for him, it's still kind of hard to believe she got him a machine gun. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really. Really. Bad. Badly. Badly. Jesus, it's like playing cards with my sister's kids. Joker has his girlfriend strip dancing in this club, seemingly only to invite fools to covet her too much or call her a bad bitch so Joker can kill them. At the risk of sounding doubly sexist, if you're this jealous, why let your lady strip dance in the club, yo? Wow, for a major metropolitan city, Gotham's river has some clean-ass water. Also, Joker flat out abandoned his woman to save his own skin. That may be in character for him, but it's still a dick move worthy of sinning. Also, somehow Joker managed to crash this car into the water, find a way out of the car, and swim out of the view of f***ing Batman before Batman jumped into the water, which, if you recall, was right after they crashed. I don't care how crazy you are, there is no way you can somehow crash into the water, then have the wherewithal to pull out your knife and fake unconsciousness for future Batman killing. After being threatened by a tiny knife from a woman that's trapped in a drowned car, Batman decides the best course of action is to treat her like the producers of this movie treat the audience. And then there's the Aussie. Hugh Jackman? Mel Gibson? Crocodile Dundee? Digger Harkness. The problem with doing a comic book movie where the general public only knows, like, one of your major characters is that you end up wasting the first third of your film doing stupid introduction montages. Aw, they dragged Tom Hardy into this, didn't they? No, wait! They hired Jai Courtney into this, didn't they? The Flash shows up to thwart this one burglar. I'm sure there was better use of his time, and I have no idea how he knew this place was being robbed, but franchise got a franchise, yo. Movie contains approximately 32 gratuitous shots of steak eating. This is but one of them. These constant close-ups of eating are symptomatic of a fetish at this point. Archaeologist Dr. June Moon. June Moon? June Moon? Why not Mary Glary, or Pam Sham, or Lucy Goosey? She opened something she shouldn't have. Something evil that, like Parallax, had been buried slightly in the earth, but not really all that hidden so as to keep anyone from ever finding it. Also, is everyone with a PhD in this movie unprofessional? We've got psychologist Harley Quinn falling in love with the Joker of all people, and now we have Dr. June Moon deciding to crack open a statue she finds during some sort of solo archaeological dig. Also, this witch character is almost exactly the same thing as Apocalypse in the X-Men movie that came out this year. Some say the witch has a secret buried heart, and whoever finds it can control the witch. Which she conveniently left behind after being released from her statue for some reason. Also, this whole thing brings up more questions than it answers. Like, how did you first run into Enchantress? What was she doing that alerted you to her presence? And if so, how did she not already take over the world with her powers yet? How did you know she came from this remote jungle, since Dr. Moon explored this cave by herself? Every character in this movie has a backstory that lets you in on what they were doing at the time they were caught. On this one, we have to take it on blind faith. You want to put our national security in the hands of witches? Gangbangers and crocodiles. This guy would be excellent at cinema sins. Colonel Rick Flagg. Almost 20 minutes in, still introducing characters. I assigned him to watch Dr. Moon, and just as I hoped, it got personal. 
I left everything to chance, see? And it worked brilliantly. I have the witch's heart, and Dr. Moon has his. Now he'll follow my orders as Holy Writ. Yeah, so that's how you got him to follow your orders, but that doesn't mean you can get all these other people to follow them. Are you gonna find a few more love witches to control Deadshot, Diablo, and Jai Courtney? Flying men and monsters, this is the only way to protect our country. I have heard your proposal, and it still sounds pretty stupid to me. Let's get a whole bunch of untrustworthy people, some of which have minor powers and others who simply have tremendous human skill, to try and fight something like Colossus. Sure, that'll work. Also, patently false. You've already seen the Batman bring in, like, half these metahuman villains anyway, right? And Superman still exists, pretend dead as he may be for now. The only way? The only way? In case you confused it for the Pentagon Cleveland. What if Superman had decided to fly down, rip off the roof of the White House? Who would have stopped him? A bunch of psychotic supervillains turned government heroes, of course. I want to build a team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. No. The end. The next war will be fought with these metahumans. Some of these villains aren't metahumans, though, right? Am I missing something? Got a guy on this team who robbed banks. And two guys who are good with weapons. Then there's a guy who can set fires with his hands, but that only makes him marginally better than a nine-year-old Drew Barrymore. You know we can't control these people. Amanda will now demonstrate how she can control this one person who is possessed by a witch and translate that into controlling everybody. As we see Dr. Moon turn into Enchantress, I will once again ask how she was possessed by this witch in the first place, but was able to control it enough to get back to the States, blab about it, and be compromised. Enchantress has the power to instantly teleport to Iran and steal plans from a vault, but not to steal her her heart back so that Amanda can't control her. And sure, later they show the case has some sort of sensor on it, but that seems to be where the case is closed and otherwise unguarded. Not that this should matter to a witch who can transport instantly to wherever she wants. I move to uh, authorize Amanda Waller to establish Task Force X. Maybe just the witch. All we really need is the witch, I think. Yo, S.A., hola, amigo. Put that burrito down. That's triple racist. Movie repeats itself down to the stupid close-up of Diablo they showed just before the wide shot of all his destruction. They say you never missed a shot. Prove it. Because whoever they are, I definitely don't trust them. Deadshot is definitely awesome at shooting, and no one should doubt he'd be great in a gun battle. But are you telling me there's nobody on this earth who isn't a criminal who can get at least close to what he's doing here? Just psychotic antisocial freaks. It makes no sense. Rick Flagg would also be excellent at cinema sense. This movie is full of people who should be working for us. But without you minding her, your lady friend stays here strapped to a board in a drug-induced coma. This movie literally has no good guys. While I do believe Joker is OCD enough to create this circle of knives, this is clearly a case of someone thought of a cool looking shot, so they put it in the movie even if it didn't make sense. This is worse than V for Vendetta's dominoes. In the previous scene, Joker's henchmen only knew that people were being taken to a black site, and that's all he knew. To finding the main guy who guards there and compromising him. Patriot Suites Hotel is totally holy god, lightning over the Washington Monument is lightning! Hogging the bed. I can hear the director on set. Okay, walk to the window. Look out pensively. Now nosh on that chicken leg like it's your last meal. And cut! Perfect! Rick Flagg is calling, but her phone is on silent for some reason, even though she's worried enough to keep her gun nearby. <laughs> Amanda brings Enchantress's brother statue with her wherever she goes, apparently. <laughs> Wait, what? Since they worship something, that something has to destroy them? Couldn't she destroy the world in a million other ways that aren't nearly as fallible? <gasps> I still don't know how this witch possession works. These subway cars are being incinerated, yet random people are running past all this on the subway platform without being affected by it whatsoever. The first non-human entity ever attacks Midway City, and instead of calling Batman, who we apparently hate because he's a vigilante, we call the Suicide Squad, entirely made up of law-breaking dickholes. Makes sense. Also, this is exactly what we created Task Force X for. To protect us against the witch, we put on Task Force X. Joker found the facility where they make the nanite explosives that are shot into the Suicide Squad's necks. Also, we can save his girlfriend. We got that information from Griggs, the sleazy security guard at the prison facility. But how the f*** did he know where they made that sh That's like asking an employee at McDonald's, where's the cattle for these burgers raised? And then them telling you the exact ranch where they're kept. A few things here. Sure, they broke into the lab, but why would they be able to hack into the government stuff just because they did that? And wouldn't this lab, which is a company owned by Wayne Enterprises, report they got robbed? Or Batman would find out they got robbed, and he'd tell the government about the security breach? So, having Enchantress's heart really doesn't mean shit when her brother can just do this, right? We won't define how much power that is, or if you sharing it makes you any weaker, but just roll with it. And lo, the unexplained goddess did thusly begin her equally unexplained plan to build an unexplained machine to wipe out someone. And lo, and such. I saw this movie before. It was called Man of Steel and Independence Day 2 with a sprinkle of Spider-Man 2. I saw it at the Museum of Modern Bullshit. Our weapons are ineffective. I thought this. So we're sending in the fire guy, the crocodile guy, the crazy chick, and the guy who shoots lots of bullets. We're pretty sure this will work somehow. I thought this was contained. What on earth would make you think that? This event happened a few minutes ago, and everything you've tried so far has been hilariously inept. The voices. 
<laughs> I'm kidding. Jeez. That's not what they really said. The voice is really said to abandon the Brooklyn accent she'd previously had for a few scenes. Military dude uses a knife to cut open this sack when there's a perfectly good zipper right there. Here comes Slipknot, the man who can climb anything. That is literally all the character development this movie will give this asshole before killing him suddenly. But even if that hadn't been the case, I'd ascend the fact that the great climber guy was named like he's an unkeepable prisoner. What do climbing walls and slipping knots have to do with one another? Also, I got a guy who can climb. That's his power? Superman, eat your heart out. And your next ejection you got. A nanite explosive. It seems to me that Amanda could have simply told the powers that be that she would stick a nanite explosive in their necks to control this task force, rather than going with the I've got Enchantress's heart, so their method of convincing the government about her power. If they didn't understand the nanite explosive thing, she could have simply said, I'm basically ripping off Escape from New York, and that would have been the end of it. Apparently John Williams was unavailable to score this movie, so instead they let a 10th grader that was high on mushrooms randomly pick the soundtrack. What, we some kind of... Suicide Squad. This is the most roll crediting roll credits that has ever credited. You're late. You all got the. This last minute chick gets a rushed flashback backstory, and movie thinks I'm gonna give a shit about her, and movie is wrong. This is Katana. Of course, that's her name. Any relation to the Mortal Kombat Katana? Her sword traps the souls of its victims. Sounds like we should have recruited her for this task force rather than a bunch of criminals. It's great the Joker is coming for her, but where did she hide this phone during this? And how the hell did Flag allow these prisoner soldiers to go on search between the prison and the start of their mission? That's bad soldiering right there, I tells ya. Relax, this is only the third least believable survivable helicopter crash in this movie. Slipknot, introduced a mere eight minutes ago, is already dead. Movie offers a new entry into the most useless and forgettable villains for the good guys to mow down contest, instantly challenging the Kree from the Avengers and the zombies from I Am Legend. These faceless creatures are dragging Flag somewhere instead of just killing him, because they know they need to give Deadshot or somebody time to save him. No doubt Deadshot is badass, but I don't see why a bunch of trained soldiers can't do this very same thing. These random monsters that just appeared out of nowhere and have never been explained in the movie are proof they need Deadshot, but I'm not buying it. She kisses him and he becomes a black bubbly soldier. My question is, did she kiss every one of the dozens of black bubble heads we just saw Deadshot kill in the previous scene? Cause that's a lot of kissing. These mannequins perfectly represent the relationship I have with my daughter. Joker texts without internal punctuation and is basically my Aunt Tilly. How did this alien dickhead know Harley was in the elevator, then jump down into the elevator with her to fight? You realize this thing would have to manually open an elevator door to access one of the work panels to get into the elevator shaft, right? So these f***ers were just stored in the ceiling? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm always thinking of the process by which they turned these guys evil, then pulled out a bunch of ladders, told them to go through the ceiling tiles, and told them to wait for the Suicide Squad to show up. Then, like always, movies aren't concerned with your perspective of this battle. They all know you like loud noises and the illusion of something exciting. And that's what they call an action scene these days. This asshole does nothing for most of the second battle in a row. And yes, I know he eventually saves the day, but is there nothing he can offer between zero and saves the day? This guy apparently needs to be goaded into using his powers. Now we realize why Diablo was conscientiously objecting to using his powers. It didn't have anything to do with killing his girlfriend. It's because he's one of the most powerful characters in this movie, and he could have made the last 15 minutes go by in five. Does chemically altering your appearance require this mega dive from super high up in a building? I'll take scenes we only included because we hired an A-lister to play Joker and felt obligated for 800, Alex. Seriously, everybody is gone after that flashback, except for Deadshot, who has been the leader of this thing for the entire mission. You'd think Flag or somebody would be concerned about them not being with the group, but you'd be wrong. So the mission was to save Amanda all along. And I guess Enchantress sent her army here because she needs them to get her heart, but I don't really know why. It feels like she could have zipped in and out of this place herself if she wanted to, even if she was building some sort of machine. And I'm not sure how her army would have been able to find a secret stairway and punch the secret code to access this room anyway. And I guess Amanda didn't tell them they were coming to save her because of something something proved their loyalty. This movie doesn't lay clear any of the motivations for the characters, so we have to take stabs at what the plot is about. She takes an average person and she turns him into a soldier who can take a headshot and still fight? Not really. They're pretty awful army-wise. They might do well at one of those those haunted houses where the employees can touch you though. What the f***ing f***? These people all knowingly worked for a clandestine agency and presumably had some level of clearance or basic trust. There is no reason to shoot them all over this shit. Hell, you got permission from your bosses to run this suicide squad, right? That is just a mean lady. Yeah, movie, this is the time for one-liner jokes, just after the unnecessary murder of several innocents. Murder, then one-liner. That's the comedy formula laid forth by Jerry Lewis, I think. A bird's been jacked. It's not important for you to know how the Joker hijacked this military helicopter, just know that he did, and be content that he's Joker and can do anything. How did Joker and his men ensure they don't hit any good guys by firing this way? Even if Joker did all these things to save Harley, what a terrible plan this is. She could easily be killed. Of course, that might not be a consideration for him, but considering everything he's done so far, it's ridiculous he didn't wait for a better opportunity. The military bombs the out of this helicopter, and they all survive, and God damn it, I have to put up with to make sins videos. And then Harley survives this fall. Jesus Christ, I'm starting to think the safest 
location in this movie is in a crashing helicopter. Why even have a helicopter crash if everybody's gonna survive all of them? This movie is a series of helicopter crashes and people eating large pieces of meat. Also, you survive a helicopter crash, and you survive a helicopter crash, and after watching what she thinks is Joker dying in a chopper crash, Harley understandably goes down to street level and pouts on the roof of a car in the rain, because that's just what you do in these situations. Okay, Harley has had her bomb disconnected, is presumed dead, and could go wherever the f*** she wants. Why is she sticking around to eventually go back to torture prison? With my heart returned, I can finish my weapon. Yeah, because before, you couldn't get that done for some reason. I get the feeling someone on the set was like, isn't she super powerful? Why hasn't she finished her weapon if she clearly has the power to do it? And then somebody said, let's make it seem like she needed her heart all along to do it. And that'll shut them the f*** up. When does this end, Flack? Character inside the movie says out loud what everyone watching it is thinking. Well, we almost pulled it off. No, you f***ing didn't. You killed a bunch of bubbly monsters and briefly rescued a psychopath that is going to put you right back in prison. That's not pulling it off. That's participating in a shitty LARP. You put that back where you found it. I'm taking my kids to mom's. I thought I married a nice man with demon tattoos all over his head, face, and 75% of his body. Yes, this guy's backstory is that he got mad at his wife for scolding him for criminal activity, and then he burned his family. That's the backstory. And this character deserves no second chances, even though the movie gives him one. You're free to go. Wasn't she already free of the nanite explosives anyway? Your daughter writes you every day. And I hand-selected seven of those daily letters to include in this small bundle. Also, emotional moment, yes, but Flag was traveling and doing combat this whole movie with these letters stuffed in his chest just in case. My daughter is gonna know that her daddy is not a piece of sh Except for all those people I killed for money. I can't take that back. But killing a witch gets me points, though. Captain Boomerang throws a boomerang, which apparently doesn't boomerang at all, but flies like a drone into Enchantress's lair, and has a camera on it that broadcasts through his phone. There's a flooded tunnel. It leads right underneath that building. Because Killer Croc has been worthless up to this point, so there's a flooded tunnel now, so his character can actually do something. <laughs> Man who killed her husband used that sword. Yeah, but who the f cares, man? You gonna fight with us? What if I lose control? Are we still debating about this? Did Diablo do something good earlier? Shouldn't he be over this by now? I mean, not the killing his wife and kids part, but the using fire for good part. So that's your old lady, huh? Yeah. Well, you need to handle this shit. All right, get up there, smack on her ass, tell her knock this shit off. This movie is so aggressively misogynistic that it briefly hosted Access Hollywood. I've been waiting for you all night. Did Enchantress just now realize the Suicide Squad was here? What exactly are her detecting powers? Did this take some time, or was she just letting them think they were hiding? And I know what you want. The movie will now waste time showing us what a few characters really want, and won't pay any attention to what I want, which is for the movie to end. This dude suddenly has horrible aim with his tentacle things. After wiping out most of the human race he interacted with before this. Also, why did Enchantress bother with all that what everybody really wants bullshit, and not just send this guy in behind them to destroy them in the first place? Katana ex machina. I lost one family, I ain't gonna lose another one. And there is no way you've bonded to these assholes in a few days' time enough to consider them family. F you, Jay Hernandez's character whose name I forgot. Let me show you what I really am. Would it have been nice to know this character could Voltron into a super tall fire god before now? Yes, yes it would have, but that would have spoiled the Ex Machina. I'll be honest, Killer Croc is underwater fighting bad guys. I've forgotten why or who or how, but I understand Killer Croc to be a water-based bad guy, and therefore I accept the existence of this scene, even as I sin its forgettableness. Yeah, do it! This fight would really be interesting if we had any clue about their powers, or the stakes, or the rules, or anything resembling a plot. My spell is complete. Took you long enough. You got your heart back a couple of hours ago. Feels like this stupid machine should be killing fools by now. Well, there goes HBO again. How does this witch even know how to target this thing? It's a secret facility. Oh. Fight against all powerful witch devolves into hand to hand combat because, of course, it does. Damn, I thought we were gonna run out of time, but the movie managed to find one more way to have a dude punch a woman in the face. Oh, look, Killer Croc finally made it to the battle after so many minutes of whatever the f he's been doing. That is indeed a vagina kick, and I'd be just as offended as a moviegoer if Harley was a dude and this was a kick to the balls. Actually, this movie is basically a kick in the balls and a Rob Schneider cameo away from being an Adam Sandler movie. Enough! <laughs> she could have done this like five minutes ago, right? I like what you're selling, lady. That Enchantress can't tell Harley is bullshitting and doesn't notice the sword right next to her. Hey, Kron! Here's something to do after the entire movie of you being worthless. Thanks for being nearby. This entire scene is done in slow motion for a whopping 90 seconds so that the agony can be greater during watching it. All in all, this chick was pretty worthless during this movie. Name one thing she did. You know one person who could end this mess right now? Harley, whose neck thing doesn't work anymore. But did this movie forget about that? I guess it did, or Harley just doesn't want to help or something. In this one movie alone, the Joker has been a red herring, a MacGuffin, and an ex machina. This is Crown Jewels here, Mr. Wayne. 
end credit sequence is so much like the Nick Fury Avengers bullshit that you might as well copy and paste the Marvel shit into this DC product. You can do it! The Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. Ignorance is bliss. Whoa, did I frighten you? Didn't mean to. 